I guess. I know what that is. What? Um, there's nothing here. Oh, you mean me, your wife. No, I mean top, ho, fragile. It's your chair. Oh, this, no, nothing to see in here. <laughs> I want to see your newfound skills. Oh no, I'm I hope scared. I hope it's travelled all right. Look, Same. she's done. I'm scared on two counts. Oh, she's done a wonderful job of um, packing it. I know. Let me see if I, I will be very careful. Better be, because if there's any damage, I think it's a name you're opening. I never quite recovered from opening that bedding, that expensive bedding, and uh, putting a very subtle knife mark in it, but I don't think you ever noticed it. What? Hang on, you told me there was no damage. Not much. Right, I'm going to keep an eye on you now. I'm not really sure you should be doing this job. No, I'm just going to concentrate. <gasps> I can see it. Oh, I'm so no, inside. Looks beautiful. Oh, it's my darling. I've been reunited with you. Are you talking about me or the chair? Oh, uh, okay. Chair? Well done. Okay, would you like a hand? Do you feel like I'm just leaving you to the world? No, I hand? think. It's currently, what, 33? It's insanely hot. I went out for a walk and just had to come back. <laughs> it's not even that early in the day, it's that far in the end. Oh, oh look. These are not its actual legs. I just feel like I could have more that. Yeah, the yeah. upholstery Bible. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. I like the pink. Right. Oh. Look. Oh. oh. The question is, can I sit on it? Am I allowed to? Please do. This is on your masterpiece. Oh. oh, yes. I think I've done a good chair or not. It's really nice. It's very Thank you. Very kindly, Celine has wrapped the remaining braid and that will be placed on this arm. And I think I have to finish this one off. And then I'm complete. So all the other braid is already on. Is it just going to be for mm. special occasions? Am I, or is it when I'm well behaved, badly behaved? <laughs> is it a throne? I feel like I still would like this to be in the front guest bedroom. Okay. AKA grandma's bedroom. The big worry is the little cats. Yeah, and cat scratching post. I think it's less likely to become that they if we. I know that, that's Hessian. Yes. Uh, I need to have a word with Ziggy and say that yeah. scratching this chair is not a good career. I agree. The thing that I really, really like you to do. Yes. Can I show you? Yes. Okay. So, you, you know, this has been your apprenticeship. Now you're going to professional level downstairs. Okay, I think I know what you're going to tell me. The empress of the family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is she is? Everyone keeps calling Coco a bee, so Ophelia and I have decided to counteract this. I'll show you. <laughs> counteract this by getting her to wear a bow. Yeah, I know that I know that men or well, anyone nowadays can wear a pink bow. You know, we're all very liberal, but this is going to remove confusion. And Grandma Jenny, in particular, if you're watching, Coco is a sheep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Show me. Show me the project. Okay. Right. So, I'm embarrassed to show you this, because it's so disgusting. I'm not sure that it's disgusting this really shows up on camera. We don't sit on it. Yeah, no, this is Coco's... Bag. Saliva. And that actually isn't really, it's caused a little bit by her licking, it's a bit disgusting, but also I did want to try and wash it and I went very badly wrong. But basically, do you reckon you can do this? This is complicated, this has got like buttons in. I know, apparently that is complex, but I'm up for the challenge. I don't think that the inside is shabby at all. I think that that won't need replacing, okay. but maybe a bit of washing. And you're going to do it with the eventual colour scheme in mind, I presume? Yes. I guess my one question is, will Coco be our sister once she creates this? I'm intending to put on a really hard-wearing, waterproof fabric okay. that can be cleaned. Well, Dali, over to you. Thank you. Here I am on the aeroplane, about to set off for The Hague, where I'm going to be reunited with my lovely sister. I have just arrived at the D. Twee Powen Art Gallery, where we are going to go and discover, hopefully, what art they've got in store for us this time. 
time and of course my delightful sister. Let's see, let's find out what we are. I do really love some of the sculptures that I'm seeing in here. Look at these three ladies to greet us as we wander in. Here you are. Hello, darling. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. So normally I see you upstairs and yes. now you've just come off the phone. So I'm catching up on work and hanging out in the downstairs part of the gallery, which is what a lovely place lovely. to hang out. Yeah. And how come you're in this corner? Tell us about uh, this. I was just looking at the art, because what I try to do every so often is to talk about a piece of art that I really like. And one of my favourites at the moment is this by Daphne Janssen. She is a Dutch artist and she's amazing. She, her studio is based in Klingendal here in The Hague and I love, love, love the way that she captures the kind of wild flowers and the nature around that area. And mm. these cowslips here in this painting just reminds me of my childhood, but also cycling through the park with our kids. So yeah, it's really, really nice. Uh, and yeah, definitely one of my favorites in it the gallery. Beautiful the moment it is, yeah. And these are the pieces by her as well, or by other artists? These are hers. Oh, wow. And all of these here, this is a nice kind of collage that Lucas put together. Wow, I mean, they, they really are very fresh and green. They're really beautiful. And um, the way they capture the light is lovely. Yeah. My other favourite that's here at the moment are the sculptures by another Dutch artist, and that is Saskia Faltzner. Look at this. This is fab. Lucas and Goran were unpacking the sculptures to put on display around the gallery. And when Goran opened these up, it's like these boxes are so fab. So we kept this one in the box because look, mm -hmm. it has this lining. I mean, how could you? It does. I, not, mean, I mean, it's part gosh. of it. It's hilarious. Um, you are actually right. I yeah. thought that it was meant to be displayed with the box, but they actually opened it up and said, we love the box and it's coming out as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And there, she does amazing, amazing sculptures. And upstairs, actually, which we need to bring down, she's got some really stunning vases and kind of big fruit bowls. Okay, come on, let's see them. Uh, okay, they're upstairs, but they're in the treasure trove area at the moment. Oh. So I'll have to take you well, all the way to the top. If you feel like you haven't been to the gym, or if you haven't been to the gym, just run up and down here for a, a few Dutch times. A Dutch house. Find a Dutch house. Uh, these oh. are hers. Gosh. They are amazing. Wow. Really beautiful. She's got a studio in Amsterdam, and I'm going to go and visit it someday. And have a look oh. at all of her work. We should go together, actually. The You'll pieces love it. really speak for themselves, don't they? I love this metal work yeah. built into it. Wow. It's absolutely fantastic. She's really, really, really talented. Yeah. And also really, really lovely. Talented and lovely. I know. Nessie, tell me about this space here, your space. What's your favourite thing going on here today? Well, Lucas has been playing around with the artwork up here. Has so he I find it, I, I like coming up here and seeing what he's done with the art. Oh, and I say, so hang on. So when you have new clients coming in, Lucas will have just pepped it up a little. But occasionally, if he sold a piece of art, but every six weeks we do a gallery 
changeover or Lucas does a gallery changeover and and then you take the credit yeah exactly <laughs> okay show us what it is up here come on my favorite piece see. is yeah. the best muse above my bespoke cabinet that i designed that has all my cushions on display <laughs> <laughs> i think i can see it it is he's another dutch artist bas is a very well-known dutch photographer we've actually just sold a piece of his art to uh, somebody quite recently from one of my clients and I have one of his pieces actually in my dining room um, but he's super clever he um, he uses the idea of all the kind of the artists from the Dutch golden era so all of these pieces mm. that are placed around here and he he plays around with scale and then like the details of when you look in and look there's this little caterpillar here oh, and look yeah. there's a reflection here through the window of this kind of lovely little dutch street and then this fly um and it's like the more you look at it the more things that you find are appearing so he's really mm. playing with perspective here isn't he yeah because scale got... perspective everything he's really clever Oh, yeah. And this one actually is, so it's, all, it, it's on a, kind of an acrylic plexi board. Mostly he has these in a kind of more of a gloss finish, but this one's actually matte and it looks really nice in the matte actually. Um, so that's quite interesting yeah. to see it in the matte version. And yeah, and that's another one of his over there. And that's oh, in the yeah. gloss, so you can behind, see it's very so shiny. That behind glass no, no, it's not. It's on. Oh. Um, it's on plexi board. Oh. And this is the the glossy one. Yes. What a difference. Yeah. It's nice. It's got its own look. Yeah. Really, and I suppose it depends what type of space it's going into. Yeah, completely. And of course, if it's in a really reflective area, so if there are lots of windows opposite quite often going for the matte is a better choice than this mm. because it's throwing out too many reflections. But mm. it does look amazing in this. I'm almost imagining a kind of Japanese interior setting <laughs> with it. Yeah, yeah, actually, funnily enough, the, the clients that, of ours that bought that, uh, the piece of art, we designed this um, principal bedroom suite in their amazingly lovely home. And it was very kind of oriental inspired in blue and red. So yeah, spot on Camilla. Oh, lovely. Uh, darling, they're Spanish. <laughs> they're made in Spain. I know. <laughs> We've come all the way here to Holland. Shoes. There are so many lovely Spanish shoes that we keep chancing upon here in Holland. We're just heading into this pokey bowl place so I can practice my Dutch. Magicht. Two salmon pokey lover balls. Geen rijst. Ma. Um, Gamend. Sla. I do, Nessie. You did really good. You missed out the met for uh, with. But it was really good. You nailed it. Do you think he understood me? Totally. <laughs> the proof of the pokey is in the pokey bowl. Indeed. Oh Nessie, you God. say the proof is in the poke bowl. Is it okay? It's delicious. And we succeeded in ordering with lettuce and not rice? Mm -hmm. Wow. I was just saying to Becky, it's a little bit like being in a sweet shop here because all these trends are just adding so much excitement to my life. And we're in the Salon Grande because this is a really good way of demonstrating everything I'm trying to talk about, especially when you look at these floor tiles. 
because they've got all the colours that this house is representing. The green, the dusty pink, it's got some yellows and some other colours thrown in to create this beautiful melange in the house. What do you think, Becky? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things you could match to this floor and it makes sense to kind of make the floor the statement piece, really, rather than the fabric. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's so busy, you don't know where to look. These are beautiful fabrics. Yeah, so we went for kind of plain, but maybe with a bit of interest through texture. And maybe these are even too much, these fabrics, because what I'm hoping to do is something a bit like you can see on this page here. So you've got a lovely, simple, but luxurious quality fabric with a trim. And that's what I want to do for the curtains in a room like this. That's my thinking at the moment, which is why then I ordered all these cool little trays that you could then go, ooh, could there be a nice maybe contrast trim? I don't know. I've got Nessie sat over there and she's watching me and I feel a bit self-conscious that maybe what I'm saying is just total load of rubbish and it's all wrong. She wants to get involved, but she's not feeling very well, so she's just having a break. I think these might be too complex, but then again, maybe this, this one. This one's plainer. I like this one. I'm thinking that we can just enjoy holding trims up. Oh, that's quite nice, because actually that matches the grey. Yeah, yeah. Pretty grey. Yeah, so I guess it depends what you decide you want to pick out and maybe even accentuate. I really like this trim here. But then even if I like it, does it actually work in the room? Or green, you could use the green because that green... I mean, you've got a lot of versatility here because you've also got this colour, the kind of creamy white. And mm. maybe I want to make this a really light, airy room and use something like that. I also love, love, love these because they're just really fun. So I don't think that would work, but what about that? I think that's a good match. So this is really, really a helpful exercise because we're just going to sit in the room and try lots of combinations of fabrics and trims. I also especially love this, where on one sample, this is all Jane's hair, by the way, on one sample card, you've got different colorways, but also different patterns and textures and so you can really get an idea for what might work in a room where you want to have a silk plane for example. I particularly love these top two silk planes. The greens is another obvious go-to. That's a really close match that one. We're not just considering floors in this very very busy room. The shades of green really do vary a lot. Things like that. So yeah, some lovely, grand, plush, large curtains to go over these windows would be great. And you can see, like, tie backs with them. Yeah. Mm. And make them really... Ness is nodding. I think I've done that. I think we're getting there. I was right. Nessie was thinking something. She's not on camera today because she's feeling really rough. She's got a bit of a fever and it's a heat wave as well. So I'm going to spare her today, but I'm going to tell you what she's told us because we've been awaiting the news from our interior design god to help us know what on earth we're doing. She's pointed out that on the ceiling, you've actually got other colours as well that it could create a pop of colour to complement what we're doing and uplift the room. Nessie has also pointed out that the gold can work quite well in the room, so we might want to think about using that in the curtains. And curtains are really what we're thinking of. It doesn't feel like we're ever going to need curtains at this time of year, but in the winter, the curtains are going to really help retain some of the heat and to help absorb some of the sound because these rooms are really echoey. Like those men's suits where on the lapel, when it's folded over, you see a different pattern. And something like this could then go on the back of the curtain. So inside the room, looking out, you wouldn't see this. Instead, the front of the curtains from inside the room would be more like this beautiful dusty pink colour. The other thing is that Nessie approves highly of my tassels. 
So this would go along the leading edge of the curtains. And of course, that would be the leading edge inside. We want it to show you against the wall because of course, we want it to tie in with the colors of the room. But here you can see the same curtain fabric. So this would effectively face outwards. And you would see this when you're on your terrace having your cocktails. And this would be your leading edge with your tassels cascading nicely. And this would be the inside looking out. Not only are we needing to think about what's happening on the floor inside the room, but also outside. So considering the pink, when we're looking out of the room, the pink on the inside of our curtains will tie in nicely with the flooring as she has so helpfully just magically positioned our fabrics here. And I'm going to just show you one more thing which is the fabric for this day that I've arrived. I'm really, really excited about this. So we're going to make a, a nice, firm base mattress and then a little concertina edge topper mattress to go over that. And it's going to be upholstered in this really nice fabric. Thank you. Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, this is so Barbie. It's almost yeah. like tweedy in fabric, it's tweed puppy. But doesn't it go really well with the pink of the floor? Yeah, it does actually. Mm -hmm. So it works super nicely in the house. And it's one of those great fabrics where from a distance or just at a glance, it looks like one colour, but actually there's a lot of interest happening through the weave of the fabric. And it's very, very Hard wearing. This is a Linwood fabric here. Really happy with this one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Baby, Cynthia, and I were having a little chat, weren't we? Because we've decided that the acoustics of this house are flawless. They're perfect. And the reason why we know this. musicians here from the UK, one is a relative, we've got a friend, and the house is filled with another feeling. Come and see, it's so special.
And I'm really hoping that our neighbours are going to enjoy the sound because our doors are open and yeah, we're surrounded by people here and we really uh, This is Mozart's Servoir uh, Ballade from um, the opera The Marriage of Figaro. Oh. He's quite famous, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's say. 